Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Guile here, and welcome back to the Forge Delights Forever promotional series. Feels like it's been a while since we've done any FAF promo work. Of course we've had lots of tournament coverage, uh, specials, and in the case of yesterday, gaps in programming. You're all like, Guile man, what the hell happened yesterday? Well, if you haven't kept up with European news, there has been torrents of unending storms that have been battering the UK and other parts of Europe for ooh, about the best part of two months now. Uh, it's complete chaos, everything is underwater, and along with that goes power outages and internet outages. But at least for the moment, balance has been restored and it's going to allow me to bring you a feature. And it is that feature of which we wish to speak more on. And that feature is going to be a custom 1v1 that's all going to go down on Roanoke's Abyss. So let's go on over to the game zone and see how they're going to get on. Love me some Roanoke. It's been a while since we've done one of these. Alrighty, let's take a look at our players up here at the 12 o'clock position. In Ferrari Red, it's Mr. Smith, good friend of Mr. Anderson, going his ever so customary uh, Cybran, opening first land, second air there, and shuffling around a few P Gens, making sure he gets everything right. Very strict regulations, town planning wise, in the Cybran Nation. Uh, that'll be because they don't have enough territory, they've got to be careful with it. <laughs> oh no, you didn't! Oh yes, I did. Uh, his opponent down here in the 6 o'clock position in lurid green or some kind of green it's bc's cack noob formerly bc jolly although i think he pm'd me the other day he's back to jolly again so who knows what's going on but what we do know is he's gone seraphim and he's opened first land second air a lot of pgens on the way because of course that's a mass to get your hands on you might be seeing some early bombers out as well we had a little bit of conversation going off between these two guys and uh, smith <laughs> Say, actually, I should have chosen Sarah. Well, for this map, yes, probably not a bad idea. Late game, uh, almost guaranteed if you're equally matched on Roanoke's Abyss, mainly purely because it's a 20 by 20 with so much C, it's hard to kill your opponent off quickly. So you're likely to get to T3, and as a result, you're likely going to be facing off against Seraphim Subhunters. Although, of course, they have been nerfed in the recent patch, but uh, we will see by how much I have not actually covered any Sarah T3 Navy games yet, I don't think, since the patch. I mean, it's negligible stuff, though, the nerf. It's not uh, anything uh, serious. It's very minor tweaks because, of course, the, the balance team didn't want to completely destroy the unit. Seraphim, uh, in aid of factional diversity, are supposed to have a really good, strong navy. So you've got to be careful and fine when balancing these things. Um, but uh, Roanoke's Abyss, of course, wonderful for not just 1v1 ladder games, but of course multi-free-for-all games, and of course phantom games. And I actually had one sent in to me today, or yesterday actually in fact, and I had a look and it was just uncastable because 25 minutes had gone into it and no one had fired a shot. And I really am on the hunt for that elusive phantom game that's high quality, that lasts a decent amount of time, there's enough intrigue, but at the same time somebody kicks off preferably within the first 15 minutes. That would be ideal, because otherwise it's just so difficult to cast. And uh, what, what's happening now with so-and-so is building more power generators, it doesn't make for particularly interesting watching. So if you have had one of those games where all the action kicks off soon, and you like your Phantom, and you know what you're talking about, send them in, because I will consider it, I promise. But anyway, first planes out for both players here. Looks like an intercept is going to go down there for Mr. Smith. Scout plane's probably going to be next. He bites the bullet, not to the defending interceptors, but from some static anti-air place nice and quickly there from Cack Noob, formerly Jolly. And we've got ACUs on the march, both going out to the east. So uh, Smith coming down to this position here, 2.30 and 4.30 over here. I don't even know if that's the correct time, but you know what I mean, that kind of thing. But uh, off he goes anyway. And look at this. Engineers caught on the transport, but the transport drops them off in time before Mr. Smith can get the kill and actually survives anyway. So Cack Noob quickly withdraws those engineers and gets them back on the transport. But a second interceptor coming from Smith, this would be hilarious. Banking as we speak, I think it's going to make it just gets to the beach in time. Will be successful in shooting down the transport, but the engineers are safe all five of them and that would have been a harsh loss for Cack Noob in the opening six minutes of this game if he was to lose that transport and all of the engineers on board but uh, alas was not to be not that I wanted to lose completely impartial but alas 
for Mr. Smith's sake. That would have been a nice snag. We do have airdrops on the way from Mr. Smith as well. Six engineers deposited from that skyhook. And uh, actually it was already an engineer going by his lonesome. Must have gone the long way around. But uh, now he has a lot of friendly buddies to help him build up nice and quickly. ACU already made landfall for Mr. Smith up here working on a land factory. And Cac Noob down here just about, about to make the same maneuver. Get on to uh, the land and preferably assist whatever's going on there. Taking a quick look at Eco. Very similar between these two guys. And of course the moment I say it, Mr. Smith drops off a cliff and then jumps ahead again. But I... Basically, we're looking at something similar, although he's having pretty significant power issues as we speak. Needs to get a handle on that. Take a look at what he's actually done. He has got a decent amount of P-Gens, but it just shows you how much mass is available on this map. You really need to get your power grid up and running seriously quickly. Both of these guys spamming out T1 P-Gens out the wazoo. Now, going out to the newbies out there, you might feel inclined to do this on every single map, but that is not ideal for Sopcom. This is just one of those larger maps where you really do have to do it because there is so much mass. But otherwise, you want to keep a very fine eco balance. That means not overbuilding power because, of course, the unnecessary pgens that you're not use is using up mass to build which could be going into pumping out units used to destroy your enemy and if you don't do that your opponent will and you will lose 10 points for anyone who can uh, name the reference there you will lose be very impressed first one to do <laughs> so first one in the comment section to correctly identify which uh, character i'm talking about from what with you will lose uh, we'll win a small prize, and I'm not going to say what it is. And it's going to be a very modest prize, because I don't have much to give. <laughs> but anyway, initial intercept to the fracas going on. Kaknu tidying up his territory nicely. It has quite a strong air contingency, actually. It's all heading north. There looks to be a couple of jesters out for Smith that could pay the ultimate price for their lack of vision. There's another little quote. <laughs> quote from something. I'm just throwing them out there all day today. Uh, he does manage to pick off one of the uh, chesters, but a cheeky little zooey heading north there. don't even know where that came from. It's been the first one out of this factory over here. But uh, Kak Noob doing the age-old Seraphim routine of building a land factory, making a rally point, and building zooeys. Herp derp. <laughs> Not a big fan, as you can tell of uh, Zooey naval spam. That uh, is just the uh, the way of it. I wanted to take on my ideas for T1 artillery and I don't blame them because they probably weren't particularly well thought out but Smith getting in behind Cac Noob's interceptors here and picking them off. That was a pretty serious loss there for Cac Noob. Must have lost about five or ten planes out of that. Definitely not ideal but for the moment Territory looking, well, not quite 50-50. Smith about to lose one up here. Nope, defending nicely. Nope, not at all. <laughs> Definitely about to lose it. Good work there from Cac Noob. Recycling that Cybern Engineer. And now has free reign, at least for the moment, to snag that little cheeky side island. He's also got this one up here. So definitely a little extra territory going into the coffers here for Cac Noob. He's also moved up here and got one of these central internal ones as well. By the way, he hasn't even bothered to go around that unit of PD. He's like, ah, just, you know, protect the west side. It's fine. It's all we need to do. Looks like he's got plans elsewhere for that engineer, which he's sending it off, but it's going to come a cropper to a trident who turns up to ruin his day. Down he goes. No more rice for you, sir. And uh, T3 sonar platform already in place. Let's slow this down and take a look at where we actually are on terms of development. We've got uh, T2 Naval Factory in play down here for Mr. Smith. And we've already got Salem's rolling off the old conveyor belt out there. I'm not seeing any T3 factories anywhere, so I'm wondering what built that sonar platform. I think it would have been Mr. Smith's ACU. I'd be very surprised if it was. He has got the T2 engineering suite. But uh, no, we'll have to keep a look for that later on. It'd be quite early for T3, but I mean, he's got that there. There's no two ways about it. That is a uh, T3 sonar platform, so he must have 
access to T3 tech. And I'm probably looking right at it. This is what usually happens. Probably looking right at it, but uh, still can't see it. Never mind. Never mind. It's all a big mystery. Down here, Cac Noob. Similar status in terms of development. He's also got T2 Naval in play. He's pumping out destroyers as of the moment. So matching the production rate there with the sails. We can boost that up to plus two once again. And Zui's coming across the northeastern island from Cac Noob. Just making landfall now. Going after the corner mechs. Mr. Smith immediately completes a Cerberus turret, which will be enough to pick off one of them, and if only those Zooies had kept a wider berth, I think they would have lasted a little bit longer, but instead they've come into the center of the island, and as soon as radar is reacquired from the ACU, the Cerberus turrets engage and help pick those last couple of units off. All Zooies inbound, but not faring too well against the Salem as it moves past those central islands. And now some cruisers on the way as well. So T2 Navy, of course, for Cybrid, particularly strong. Able to uh, hold up nicely against the Seraphim T2 Navy. But uh, it's all a different story when the game moves into that later phase. Let's see whether Kaknu completed. Yes, he did. He's got the mod there that tells us exactly what he's doing. So that ACU now has access to T2 Tech. And uh, nice timely finish of that. Had him to pop out of the water then. There was enough on the ground to really threaten him, or in the water, I should say. A little bit of uh, Corsair action going on as well. So we've got access to T2 Air Force for Mr. Smith. How does that compare down here? Uh, doesn't for the moment. Seems like we're operating off T1. I wouldn't be surprised if Cac Noob jumps to T3 Navy as soon as possible. I really am mystified about the emergence of that sonar platform. No doubt someone will tell me something blindingly obvious in the comment section below. Go, Guile, you're such a fool. Don't you know that T1 NGs can build T3 sonar platforms? Well, no, actually, I didn't. Because that's crazy take a look at the reclaim side of things. Mr. Smith banking 10,300 so far. Cac Noob putting in around 9,000, so modest advantage there for Mr. Smith. 17 and a half minutes gone in this one. But Cac Noob ahead slightly on generated mass, 153 to 140. And a cheeky little naval run by here from Smith. He's got subs and frigates chasing after his own units. The stragglers are going to get picked off, I think. The Salem should be okay. The question is, can he affect any damage? Well, it's quite a usual strat to get in behind these main bases, if you can. Try and pick off these mexes around the fringes of the island. But it's going to come down to how well this Salem can survive. Keeping ahead of the main pack. Doing just enough to pick off units as they get in range. But there is a destroyer closing in on his position as we speak. Able battle heating up over in the east and quite a density of T2 emerging from Mr. Smith. We've got four Salems, we've got two Barracudas. And that is pretty dangerous. Yes, we've got T2 down here as well. Uh, certainly that's enough to be concerned with especially the mix of the Barracudas in there wisely Cacnu dropping back the cruiser there getting his own destroyers out in front he needs to get them to dish the damage and the frigates to absorb the incoming fire though there's not a great deal of them left Of course, the continual floating hover power of the Seraphim is just annoying because you can keep throwing land units at you as well. And if 
Finally, those naval units were dealt with, I believe. I think they've come all the way up here, but they might have done. Cat Noob doing a nice job there on Naval D. But, uh, yeah, Yenzines join the battle. The hover tanks be good at countering Navy. Shooters still remain a problem. One of them slightly wounded, 730 HP left on him. Neither player looking like he's about to break as yet. But if that is realistic mass count, then things have changed dramatically. Kak Noob has really charged on Eco in the last couple of minutes. 250 to 169, and that is being done off the back of even map control, which is uh, borderline concerning, at least if you're rooting for Mr. Smith in this one. Mr. Smith plowing more resources into offensive weaponry, but not gaining any credit on the field for it. Noob developing his eco while doing more with less on the field. It's not a good recipe for equality in a game. That is the sort of situation that's liable to get Mr. Smith into trouble. Oh, destroy it. Taking a lot of fire there. He's not going to get out of it. Down he goes. And, uh, this could be an opening for Smith, if he can just pile a few more units on down here and knock out this bottom right island. But check this out, T2 artillery battery stationed on this island. Looks like that's placed in just the right position, of course. This is not Bunny Roanoke, where all these islands were nicely equalized and flattened. This does have these little hillocks that are different sizes and shapes on these various islands. the sort of uh, idea of the coverage that he's got with this. It's very difficult for this Navy to get any closer to this island and start dishing out any damage. He's contending with all of the naval units that have been thrown at him, but continual artillery fire as well. He does take its toll, but a Barracuda getting in around the side shooing away these cruisers a little bit, nearly bagging one of them actually, that's down to around 320 HP, but a torpedo launcher is going to prevent that Barracuda from finishing the kill. And Mr. Smith has come right forward with his ACU and sensing that there's a problem, immediately starts erecting harms down here. Now this is a very interesting development indeed. Mr. Smith obviously with access to T3 on the comm, there it is. And if you get a few of these online, can be very difficult to dislodge him from this position. We do have T3 emerging onto the field for Cac Noob as well. A couple of sub hunters making an appearance. Look at the amount of firepower that Cac Noob is diverting to this side of the map. It's almost like this is two different factions up here that don't actually have a problem with one another. It's completely peaceful on this western side of the map, but over in the east, a very different tale to be told. Now, missiles inbound on ground fire to these harms from the cruisers. Hey, are we damaging the harms? But uh, the siren cruisers back here for Mr. Smith intercepting a lot of those cruiser missiles as they come in. And now with sea-based zappers on the scene, I don't think anything is going to get through with the amount of cruisers that Cac Noob currently has deployed. Three is not going to cut through that. But of course, Harms are going to be effective against the floating units. Zui's and Yenzin's going to be able to penetrate that defense. The frigate's doing a nice job of mopping that up. 
And the problem, of course, for Cac Noob is this is creating a large debris field very close to Mr. Smith's comm, who at T3 can hoover it up exceptionally quickly without exposing himself to too much in the way of threat. But in comes a battleship, and this is a whole other affair. Palms not able to contend with the range of a battleship and vulnerable to the splash damage from the rounds. This could be a bit of a deal breaker. Siren taken out in the middle. Looks like he's going after the zappers now. This will bring the cruiser missile fire into play and increase the amount of pressure on this forward position. Mr. Smith has backed up a little bit. Working on some sonar platforms. He needs to sink that battleship, but he hasn't got a lot on the field to do it. He has to hope it comes into range of the harms. can't honestly see that noob doing that, at least until uh, those harms are out of commission. Cat noob completes T3 on his comm. And this is a uh, costly little loss, actually, for Smith. He's invested quite a lot. Those harms aren't cheap. Let's take a look at how much they actually cost. Should know this off by heart by now, but uh, so many units it's pretty difficult. 3,000 mass a piece. That is an uh, expensive piece of kit. Two of them down in front along with Sam, Zappers, a couple of naval facilities. And now, of course, not forgetting loss of the mass field in this area. A lot of mass to be scooped up for the player that can control this particular patch of ocean now. Let's take another look at Eco, what's been happening since Cagnoob has charged ahead. Well over a hundred mass advantage now. 322 plays 214. Let's take a look at Reclaim. 32,800 banked for Cagnoob and 20,000 banked for Smith. So at the moment Cagnoob is ahead on all fronts but look out! Bug incoming. Where have we got in terms of rally point for this one, we can't see as yet. Do we have T3 air? It literally just completes. I don't know if that's reactionary or it's just reaching that time when he thought, you know what, 30 minutes gone in this game, we need to get T3 on the field. Well, it couldn't be more urgent as ASFs and a bug are now bearing down on this position. Look at the amount of build capacity that's going to get annihilated. So much free XP. So much free veterancy for that bug already on 164 kills. And now core base for Kaknoob in major difficulties as he self-destructs all of the build capacity in that main island. Not wanting to afford that bug any extra unnecessary rank in veterancy. But I think it's too little too late. 215 kills. What's he on in terms of actual veterancy? help if I selected the right player. There we go. He's only on two, so lots more HP to fly on there. It's all been low order T1 stuff that it's been killing. But Cac Noob will certainly miss those T3 mexes, which like it looks like all three are going to go down. Cac Noob bringing in a couple of cruisers and a raised sub hunter. This thing's put out a lot of anti-aircraft fire. But it's not enough to contend with the bug. It's going to be able to smash both the cruiser and the sub hunter. And now the T3 Naval HQ under pressure as well. Does he have another one? He has a couple more up here, but other HQs. He doesn't finish it off. I think that could be a mistake. Instead, he's going on to other clients. But look at this counter offensive up here from Cat Noob. Knows he's got to keep the pressure on. Attack is the best form of defense. Cannot allow Mr. Smith's investment into that bug. Go unpunished. And what do I mean by that? Well, that is a huge investment in resources, especially from Mr. Smith, who's been trailing all this time. And with all those resources deployed in one area down here, Cat Noob needed to cause some damage somewhere else like what I see there, but I'm not sure how much he actually achieved. And now with Revenants on the field, strap bombing 
after the fleet, going after the battleship. Now the bug has turned up. That battleship's days are certainly numbered. Taken down in almost no time at all, but look at this. Decent work made over in the east. Battleship with some Athena's mobile shield gens to cover it. Not actually covering it properly at the moment, but they can move into position at a moment's notice. And Gunther's T2 static artillery on the beach there, getting beaten down. Doesn't actually finish the job though. Battleship forced to retreat. Might as well just stay on there and try and kill more stuff. He's not going home. Too much fire from that bug and those strap bombers. Time to time, again, you see people withdraw units that are so clearly dead, they may as well just hold their ground and try and kill a few more units. Of course, you don't want to give free mass to your opponent, but think of what was in range there, all of these mexes that could have been taken out. It would have been worth it. Another T3 Naval HQ over in the east. For Cac Noob, that's going to go down. But there's still one back at home. I wonder if that was built after that last attack or during that last attack. Cac Noob, assuming he was going to lose that HQ. It's actually the new one that he lost. You never know what's going to happen in this game sometime. But 326 kills on that bug so far. Glorious. But look at the Zui attack. And Yenzin attack over in the west. Deployed presumably from down here. Outrageous. It's just run over that island. And still. That hasn't caught Kaknu back up after the loss of this main island. Mr. Smith still ahead despite losing the northwestern island. 274 to 295. Of course, Mr. Smith must be concerned about this force coming in to attack over here. That's a lot of dragonflies, Batman. What are you transporting exactly? I'm sure he knows, but a second bug on the way. 56,000 HP complete. And now the order of the day is Renegades on base defense duty in the come. Should be able to tidy those up without uh, Mr. Smith being subjected to too much danger. But this northeastern island still operational for Mr. Smith. Despite that last attack. Uh, it's a good thing, too, because having lost this position up here, he'd be in major difficulties. But now, two bugs on the field. And surely, Mr. Smith needs to switch to ASF, so it's what he's doing. He's got a lot of eco now tied up in these two experimentals, and he's going to want to keep them alive. That is the end of this little push here from Cac Noob. Those renegades en masse tidying up those zooies without any difficulty whatsoever. Let's take a look at these two air forces because this is going to be crucial now. 30 ASFs on the field for Mr. Smith. Sorry, for Cac Noob and 11 on the field for Mr. Smith. And he needs to tidy that up quickly because he cannot allow Cac Noob to shoot these two down now. These are the, his lifeline to get on top properly in this game. Cac Noob caught up very well once again on Eco thanks to that attack in the top left in come the bugs beelining straight for that battleship of course annoying that he's facing Seraphim floating flak a problem and in they come this could be dangerous lots and lots of Ioshiva Moving in, and look at the collective damage these two will take. The first one taking the brunt of the fire. ASF's coming in at the same time. 
40k, 35k HP left down into the red. That is going to go down even before Mr. Smith's ASFs arrive on the scene. And now the second one is under pressure. This is the one that has attained so much veterancy, 350 kills. He's going to want to keep this alive. It will regen at a reasonable rate, but I don't think he's going to be able to. Lots of commitment from Cac Noob just shooting this down. He does at least manage to get it over friendly territory so he can pick that mass back up again. But that is a painful loss. Both of those bugs taken out. Renegades, meanwhile, down here working on this bottom left island. And falling foul. Some more Ioshivas, but still picking off a few mexes. But it's not enough to keep Cac Noob behind him. 355 to 290. And then, of course, massive power drain, presumably, affecting his mass output. But there's no two ways about it. Cac Noob getting back on top of the eco side of things in this game at the 41st minute. Going into the 42nd. And he's actually grabbing control of this northwestern island as we speak. But this is a major issue now for Smith. He has got a, a nuke launcher on here. And that missile is almost done. But he's got to be concerned. He's actually laden a, uh, or loaded up a dragonfly full of engineers. Ten engines on board. That's a lot of build capacity. Should be enough to grab this. The only problem is there's a large contingent of Yenzines and Zui's just south of that position that will immediately, I presume, get dispatched once Kak Noob recognizes the move. But a lot of bombarding, fu bombarding firepower stationed off the southern tip of this northeastern island. Kak Noob Battleship sitting safely behind these mobile shield gens. And lots of cruisers dotted in amongst them. This does not look good for Mr. Smith. Mexes under pressure. Gunther's slowly succumbing to cruise missile and battleship fire. Nuke must be nearly done. Another bug on the way. That nuke is indeed complete. And it really was all down to those two bugs. That's what's represented the swing in this game. If he could have kept those alive, he would have had magnificent maneuverability in this game. He could have gone anywhere. He could have cleared all of this up. Taking this out again, picked off every one of these side islands that's bringing in quite a lot of mass. These are all T2 mexes around the bottom. T2 mex here. That would have definitely eroded Cac Noob's advantage, but as it stands now, look at that. Very significant advantage. Uh, Mr. Smith on an upgrade. Let's take a look at what's going on here. What's he got so far? So he's got the T3 engineering suite. He's got the nanite torpedo launcher as well. I wonder if we're going to see some kind of teleport on the way. He'll be trying to teleport in and kill off Cac Noob's comm down here. He's certainly working on an Awasa experimental bomber in the water there. He has to do something. This cannot continue the way it's going. If it does, it is going to end just one way. I'll take a look at what it is when it completes. Because I am mighty curious. It is the teleporter. There we go. Going straight for another upgrade, is he? That be colossal amount of power going into that 
And I think he's going for the microwave laser generator. And if he can telemaser in here and kill off strategic missile defense, then that nuke will be allowed to connect. If you can get in quickly, strategically, and get out, he could be onto a winner. But time is a ticking, and he is losing a tremendous amount of map control. He may have to consider depositing the nuke on his doorstep. Finishing off that navy, however, it's not particularly closely bunched together. Mr. Smith, now complete on that upgrade. It is the microwave laser generator, so that is now a dangerous telemasercom. It must surely be about to go for it. a scary sight indeed Seraphim Navy bearing down on your position bad times I'm still amazed how pretty this game is not bad for 2007 Seraphim Battleship strange just a little bit too close to the front of the island now a brilliant decision. Down it goes. No need for that. That was definitely an error, but whoa, look out! Telemazer activated. He's taken it down, but look at the amount of fire coming in from all of the ships around here, and Mr. Smith says GG. He's not going to get out. He is charging, but he doesn't manage it. He fires the nuke off. And uh, there we have it. Good attempt, though, from Smith. Why the hell not? Nearly got out, too. But uh, I don't know how much that would have changed the game. The amount of pressure coming in on him was pretty significant. He had started to spit out galaxies. Excellent at... Uh, well, any of the battleships are good at taking down the sub-hunters if they're not microed. And, uh, well, I mean, this is all cruisers in here. Now they've got a battleship, but that's uh, non-direct fire, which is easy to deal with. And everything else is just build capacity. So you know what? If that had landed, if he'd have got in and got out and that landed, that could have potentially extended the game, but it wasn't to be. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. As always, more to come from me in the future. In the meantime, stay well and stay safe. This is Guile, signing out.